Hi, this is Jared Walton from Anantech. I'm here today showing AMD's dynamic switchable graphics solution using the Sony VIOC. You can see we're going to test Deus Ex Human Revolution. We're going to tweak the settings a bit here. If you want optimal performance, you'll probably want to turn off SSAO. Everything else is pretty much set. Disable VSync, and we're ready to go. We've got this set for high performance, so it's supposed to use the discrete GPU, and we fired it up. I'll fast forward through the opening stuff, and here we are at the game itself. This is running off of the 6630M graphics. Frame rates are somewhere in the vicinity of 30 to 35 frames per second, depending on where we're looking, and everything looks pretty much as you would expect. Once more, I'm going to exit and we'll fast forward through a little bit of the intervening video. What I'm going to do is set it for power saving mode and we'll get over to the actual game again. All the settings are the same. We fired it up and what you'll see is that performance is essentially unchanged. What's happened is that even though we've used the dynamic switchable graphics and set it to use the Intel graphics, it's still running on the discrete GPU. Now, let me show you this. We're going to switch over to manual mode. Watch how long this takes to switch. The screen flickers, goes blank. Drivers get loaded, unloaded. It's a messy situation. This is what prompted NVIDIA to create Optimus in the first place. So now we're switched over. We're running in manual switching mode. You can see we're set for the high performance GPU. And let's go ahead and fire up Deus Ex again. Same settings. Start the game up. And here's regular speed. And performance is roughly about where we saw it before. It's actually a bit higher. Maybe only 5 to 10% higher. Now with manual switching, if you wanted to change between the discrete GPU and the integrated graphics, you have to go through this dialog again, and you get the flickering again. Ideally, you would only do that when you're plugging in or unplugging the unit. Once more, this time with the IGP actually active. DirectX 11 is now grayed out, if you saw that. And performance is quite a bit choppier. It's about half the frame rates, maybe even less from what we were getting on the discrete GPU. So for Deus Ex Human Revolution, dynamic switchable graphics at least enables the GPU, but it doesn't allow switching and otherwise it works okay. Next up is Dirt 3 testing, but let me pause for a minute to show you how long this Sony laptop sometimes takes to launch Catalyst Control Center. This is a pretty regular experience the first time you launch it or after playing games. Right now the hard drive light is pretty much solid. I've got a desktop with a solid state drive where it launches in two to four seconds, but on this Sony it's often painfully slow. In this case it takes over 30 seconds to launch. That's not acceptable really. I don't know if the newer drivers are better, but let's hope so. Let's start with manual switching on Dirt 3 this time. What you'll see is that full screen mode simply doesn't work. I'm fast forwarding some of this. It doesn't load nearly this fast. But you saw there the corruption windowed mode works. Here we are at the main menu. If we change the resolution, we'll set it for medium detail. The window still looks okay. But if we hit Alt Enter and go to full screen mode, we got this corruption. So full screen mode doesn't work with manual switching on Dirt 3. Okay, we're going to try dynamic switching now, starting with the dedicated graphics. We're still at the medium presets, now running at native resolution in full screen. Everything's working properly there. We'll fast forward through the benchmark here. You can see the frame rate up in the corner. We're getting around 40 frames per second on average which is perfectly playable. So there's the result, 43.5 frames per second. 
There is, however, a glitch with dynamic switchable graphics. There's an extra black border on the right portion of the screen. You can see that in windowed mode a lot more clearly. That's there across all resolutions when in dynamic mode. Switching over to power saving GPU and running Dirt 3, we run into the same issue that we saw with Deus Ex. Namely, the integrated graphics doesn't actually do the rendering and everything still takes place on the GPU. You can see our settings here that all of the things were still set according to the DirectX 11 capabilities. Blasting through the benchmark, we get to the final result and you see once again 44 frames per second, so no change. We have a change of pace here with Duke Nukem Forever. We didn't actually have any rendering errors or other anomalies with AMD's dynamic switchable graphics or manual graphics, so everything works properly. The discrete graphics is running right now. We're getting over 30 frames per second at moderate detail levels for the game and as we switch over to the IGP here we drop down to about half the frame rate you can see this mirror is really a demanding scene one of the lowest frame rates we've encountered in the game and so that's good news Duke Nukem Forever and his potty mouth run without problems if we fire off the Wayback Machine and do some OpenGL testing with enemy territory Quake Wars, we have set it for high performance mode on dynamic switchable graphics just to show you that, like all the OpenGL stuff we tested, it doesn't work with dynamic switchable graphics. You get an error message. You also get this in the power saving mode, as well as if we try to run off of the IGP in manual switching mode. So. It's partly drivers and partly OpenGL. If we turn off dynamic switching and use manual switching instead with the HD6630, we can actually run enemy territory without problems. We assume it will work with other OpenGL games, although we've only tested with Minecraft. We've basically maxed out all the settings except for anti-aliasing and then we run our old time demo. We're getting above 60 frames per second which isn't too surprising considering the age of this title but it just goes to show that you can play OpenGL with AMD's graphics you just need to use it in manual switching mode. So taking a quick break from the gaming to focus on another UI element let's manually add a game to high performance graphics. So here I'm going to put in my Steam directory, I browse for The Witcher 2's executable, and once I find that, well it's already set for high performance. If you want to add another game, it defaults to the same start menu location, which can be kind of irritating. This is yet another instance where it would be really helpful to have a list of profiles that I could simply select the game. We'll wrap things up with Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. Here we are running dynamic switchable graphics on the dedicated GPU. You can see our detail settings and uh, we'll use the built-in benchmark. You'll notice that none of the characters are animated properly. They've got their arms stuck out to the side. You see the flashes of the battle, but obviously the game's not really playable this way. So, yet another failure for dynamic switchable graphics. When we switch over to the integrated graphics, you can see how the game is actually supposed to render. So, the frame rates are about half as fast, but we're still above 30 frames per second, and the game is actually quite playable. If you switch to manual mode, all of the rendering issues we had with the discrete GPU go away. So you can certainly play Super Street Fighter 4, but you'll need to make sure you shift to manual switching instead of application-based switching. Our final game that we're going to test is The Witcher 2. Like Portal 2, which we're not showing the video for, The Witcher 2 actually runs without difficulty on dynamic switchable graphics. You saw our settings, which is basically the medium spec, but turn off the V-Sync. Um, when I say it runs without difficulty though, I mean that it's rendering properly. Even on the discrete GPU, you can see here that performance is quite low.
it will be a bit higher in the game proper. This cutscene is pretty taxing, but even at the very minimum settings, the game still looks good, but it runs at less than 30 frames per second. So you're going to need something more powerful than the 6630M or GT540M. This is the same scene running on the integrated graphics. And if it was too slow before, obviously Intel's HD 3000 has no chance of running the game acceptably. We're getting a sub 10 frames per second throughout most of the cutscene and in the main game. So if you want to play The Witcher 2, you'll need at least a moderately high-end laptop or else just play on your desktop. We'll wrap things up by showing some actual gameplay footage of The Witcher 2. This is with all settings at minimum, so this is your best performance that you're going to get from the game on the discrete graphics. This concludes our video showing AMD's dynamic switchable graphics in action. There are definitely some issues that need to be ironed out. It works in most games with either manual or dynamic switching, but there are plenty of problems where you do need to use manual switching.